What's up guys, hope you're having a good day. In this video, we are going to be taking a deep dive into the fight between Anthony Smith and Ryan Spann from a gambling perspective. So if you're thinking of betting the fight this weekend, this is the only video that you need to watch. Hopefully you'll be able to use the information in this video to make better betting decisions, put together better DraftKings lineups and hopefully earn some extra cash. Now we're going to be doing things very differently on this channel from now on because if you've been watching my videos for a long time or if you watch my live research sessions on Twitch or if you're a member of my website, you will know that I put a lot of time into researching these fights which means that researching an entire UFC card is a really time consuming process. This means that I'm often still researching a UFC event on the Thursday or Friday night before that event is scheduled to take place. This means that I post breakdown videos to YouTube way too long. They're not going online until like Thursday or Friday night before an event takes place, which doesn't give you guys much time to watch them. But the problem is I can't get them out earlier in the week because I'm still researching these fights. So the way things are going to work from now on is I'm going to try and post one breakdown video for one main event fight or one main card fight every single day of the week leading up to the day that the fight takes place these videos will be short 10 15 minute breakdowns which means you'll be able to blitz through watching my breakdowns of the fights you care most about faster it'll save you time than having to watch my long breakdown videos and i'll be able to get these breakdowns out way sooner to you hopefully starting on the monday or tuesday of fight week and when i'm ahead of schedule even the week before so i'm hoping that you'll prefer this way of me doing things a lot better leave a comment below and let me know what you think and what i'm really 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 going to try hard to do is post one breakdown video every single day at around about the same time so that you guys know exactly when to expect content from me so if you appreciate that new way of working hit the like button below and as soon as this video gets 100 likes I will be dropping the next breakdown video for the co-main event between Ion Kutalaba and Devin Clark. I think this new way of working is going to be better for everyone. And fingers crossed it will enable me to get breakdown videos out to you guys way sooner. Which means, you know, it's going to just be better for everyone. So let's now jump into this fight between Anthony Smith and Ryan Spann. So we'll kick things off by taking a look at the odds on this one. So Anthony Smith is currently the favourite at odds of around 1.60, which is minus 167, which is an implied probability of about 63%. If we take a look at the odds on Ryan Spann, he is currently around about a 2.45 underdog, which is plus 145 for an implied probability of 41%. So in the eyes of the bookies, this is roughly 60-40 in favour of Anthony Smith. So if you want to bet this fight, you've got to give Smith a better than 60% chance of winning. And if you want to bet Span, better than 40% chance of winning. That's kind of how you should be approaching whether or not you want to bet this fight. So it's an interesting matchup, this. Anthony Smith is a guy that, even though he's won his last two fights, I do feel that he's on a bit of a decline, which isn't a surprise. You know, he's had over 50 pro fights. He's taken a lot of damage throughout his career. And even though he is only 33 years old, he's going to be a guy that has got a lot of miles on the clock. There are certain red flags that exist that are kind of a sign that a fighter is starting to decline. And unfortunately, Smith is showing some of these you know, red flags that exist in fighters when they do start to decline. Like I say, Smith is pretty young for a light heavyweight. But with 50 pro fights under his belt, he's going to have taken so much damage in his career, so much head trauma, and he's probably dealing with a lot of chronic long-term injuries that are not going to heal, and they're just going to make it harder for him to train and compete to his full potential on fight night. So Smith is one of these guys that I do think is a little bit risky betting on these days because... He has become quite inconsistent. I would kind of put Smith into the same sort of bracket as a Donald Cerrone where, you know, when Smith shows up and performs to his full potential, he's one of the best light heavyweights in the world. There's no doubt about it. But you always feel like there's a good chance he won't show up and perform to his full potential. And for that reason, it kind of makes it difficult to cap Smith as having a better than 50% chance of winning any of his fights because you just never know when he's going to show up. A good example of this has been his recent performances. You know, he looked really good against Jimmy Crute, but then despite beating Devin Clark, didn't look great against Clark, gave up some weak takedowns, accepted being on his back for a little bit too long. And in my opinion, he looked absolutely awful against Alexander Rakic and Glover Teixeira. 
you know, against Glover. He was gassed out, you know, by the end of the second round, which enabled Glover to take him down in the third, fourth, and fifth round and absolutely maul him. And the Alexander Rakic performance was such a strange one because, you know, Anthony Smith is a decent grappler. You know, he's a black belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. And Alexander Rakic is a kickboxer, and yet Rakic was able to drag Smith to the ground very easily, lay on top of him, beat him up for 15 minutes, and Anthony Smith made absolutely no attempt to get back up to his feet. So a few moments ago when we were talking about red flags and signs that a fighter is on a decline, that is a big one for me. When a fighter, when a fighter kind of makes a conscious decision to lose, when a fighter puts themselves in bad positions... When a fighter makes decisions that they know is probably going to result in them losing, it's just a huge red flag for me because it's kind of like um, it's kind of like they're not thinking clearly or they're not fighting to win anymore. They've kind of lost that fire. They've got kind of like that self-destructive mentality within them. You know, I'm not saying that Anthony Smith was capable of beating Alexander Rakic. I don't want you to under- misunderstand the point I'm trying to make here. But Anthony Smith accepted losing against Rakic. He didn't try to win. And that's a massive red flag for me. If you're thinking about an Anthony Smith this weekend, I highly recommend that you go and watch that Alexander Rakic fight. Because he was flopping to the ground, pulling guard, giving up weak takedowns. And even more concerningly, when he was on his back, he just accepted being on his back for the entire duration of the round. Didn't make any effort to get back up to his feet. And Smith is smart enough to know... It's impossible for him to win a fight like that off his back. So it was a huge red flag for me. And it just makes it very difficult to bet on Anthony Smith as a favorite. Because you never know when those kind of self-destructive behaviors will creep back in and cost him a fight. So if we look at how these two guys match up in terms of size. That will segue nicely into talking about this fight from a striking perspective. So Anthony Smith and Span are both very big light heavyweights. Smith is six foot four with a 76 inch reach, and Ryan Span six foot five with an 81 and a half inch reach. Now that obviously means that Span has got just over a five inch reach advantage in this fight. But I don't think the reach advantage for Span is going to be a huge deal here, just because Span doesn't have the kind of style of striking which will really utilize that reach, take advantage of it, and make life difficult for Smith. You know, with a guy like Span having that 5-inch reach, you'd want to see him kind of stay on the outside and use his length to chip away at Smith with leg kicks and jabs from a range where Smith will have to cover distance to be able to counter him. That's how you want to see a guy like Span use that reach. But he just doesn't. That's not what his style of striking is like. Instead, Span's one of these guys that likes to blitz forward and just load up on big power shots. He just wings big, wide, looping hooks, throws everything into his power strikes, and really just looks to take you out. You know, this is not a guy that's comfortable in kickboxing range because he's just not that technical and he doesn't read his opponent particularly well. He's one of these guys that wants to be all the way out of a range where he can be hit or all the way in blitzing forward looking to knock you out and take you out with big singular power strikes because he's just not good enough, not technical enough in that kickboxing range. So in terms of technique, Anthony Smith has got a huge advantage over Ryan Spann when it comes to striking. Anthony Smith at middleweight, striking wasn't that impressive. He was very slow at middleweight. At times it looked like he was fighting underwater. But Smith looks a hell of a lot better at light heavyweight. And we saw that Smith has definitely still got it when it comes to striking in his last fight against Jimmy Crute. I thought he looked phenomenal against Jimmy Crute. He did a really good job of staying behind that jab and hammering Jimmy Crute with well-disguised leg kicks that ended up doing a lot of damage and ended up essentially winning the fight for Smith, right? Crute. Crute suffered a leg injury and couldn't continue. So it was a brilliant performance from Smith. I was really impressed with his accuracy, with his boxing, his hand speed, his jab. He just did great. And I do think if this fight stays standing, Smith is going to be too much for Ryan Spann to handle. He's just too technical. He's going to be able to chip away at the legs of Spann, you know, rack up a lot of damage and volume with the jab. And I don't see Spann having an answer for that because Spann doesn't throw a very high volume of strikes. And like I say, he's one of these guys that likes to be all the way out or all the way in. And he's just not going to be able to match the volume and match the technical advantages that Smith has in that kickboxing range. But that doesn't mean the span can't cause Smith some problems standing because span is one of these guys that has a kill or be killed style of fighting. If you look at his record, 
tens and tens and tens of his fights have ended in round one. And this is because he tends to come out the gate super aggressive, looking to take his opponent out of there in round one. And Span is very dangerous early because he's extremely reckless. You know, he doesn't consider what his opponent might be looking to do to counter him. He doesn't consider what might be coming back his way when he blitzes forward recklessly. He literally just closes his eyes, blitzes forward, loads up on big wide hooks. And if one of them connects, he's going to hurt you bad, which is why Span does have so many wins you know, in the first round. I know there's a lot of submissions in here, but a lot of the time those submissions come from overwhelming his opponents with strikes first. So... Span will pose a threat to Smith because even though Smith is a much better striker than Span, Smith at times is a little bit slow to react to his opponents. He's not the best defensively, he is quite easy to hit. And so even though he's more technical, when Span does come forward, Smith will be at risk of catching something big and, you know, getting himself knocked out. Having said that, Smith isn't an easy guy to finish. This guy is tough as nails. If we take a look at his record, again, he has had over 50 pro fights. But if we scroll back through those 50 pro fights, hasn't lost many of them due to knockout. So if we take a look here, um, can't really count this one as a knockout because he was in round five. And Glover had kind of worn Smith down and beat him up with ground and pound. So that's more of a stoppage due to damage and exhaustion for me. So if we keep scrolling... Uh, he was knocked out by Thiago Santos uh, back in 2018. If we keep going, he was uh, knocked out by Amagov back in 2011. But aside from that, obviously we don't know how these early fights ended. But to me, it looks like Anthony Smith has only been KO'd like twice in 50 pro fights, which is incredibly impressive. And even if you do want to include some of these fights in there, we don't know how the end, they, they ended. But even if you do want to use these as a case for saying, well, you know, Smith has actually been stopped with strikes a lot more frequently than you're saying he has. Let's just take a look at how many times he's been finished in the UFC. So he's had uh, one UFC fight there that ended by Nibar. Uh, let's actually discount that one and just go with his most recent UFC fights only because there's like a three-year gap between the Josh ne no sorry between the Leonardo Guimeres and Antonio Braganetto fight. So Smith likely to have improved a lot in that three years. So let's just go and look at his current run in the UFC. As we can see, within that time, he's only been KO'd once in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15. That's so impressive to me. Anthony Smith has only been knocked out one time in 15 fights in the UFC. So even though he's not the best defensively, he can take a shot. He's tough as nails and he's not easy to put away. So Ryan Spann definitely poses a threat to Smith with a knockout. But, you know, the, the records suggest it won't be easy for Smith, uh, Spann to knock Smith out. In terms of grappling, this fight is a lot more complicated because Anthony Smith is probably a better grappler than Span. He is a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt. But Smith, like we spoke about earlier in the video where we're going over Smith's red flags, Smith is a guy that does not understand the importance of position over submission. And when we talk about position over submission, what we really mean is the guy in the dominant position is usually winning the fight in the eyes of the judges. This concept is lost on Smith, and for whatever reason, it's almost like he treats MMA fights as a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu contest, where he wants to play guard and attack with submissions off his back, which is often putting him in a losing position. This makes this fight kind of complicated to break down from a grappling point of view, because even though Smith is probably a better grappler than Span, if he's on his back, it doesn't really mean anything, because if Span can get him down, get into top position... Span is going to be winning the fight in the eyes of the judges. And that is one of the biggest risk factors, I think, to betting Anthony Smith this weekend. Again, earlier in the video, we spoke about Smith's willingness to give up weak takedowns, pull guard, flop to his back. And the most concerning thing about Smith is when he's on his back, he makes absolutely no attempt to get back to a, uh, get back up to his feet whatsoever, which is a huge issue because it doesn't matter if he's got freaking... If he, it really doesn't matter if Anthony Smith has got you know a really strong wrestler like I don't know someone like Curtis Blades or Alexander Romanov. It doesn't matter if he's got those guys on top of him, 
or fucking Hannah Cyphers, at the end of the day, if you're not going to make any effort to get back up to your feet, you are potentially gifting a win to your opponent because usually the guy on top is the person winning the fight in the eyes of the judges. So this is a huge red flag for me because, you know, Ryan Spann, he's a big, strong, athletic, physically imposing light heavyweight. And if he starts to get into trouble standing, he might just choose to try and take this fight to the ground. And it's very easy to take Smith down. Smith's takedown defense is very poor. He'll often pull guard, flop to his back. And like I say, at the end of the day, Spann's not a great grappler. But if Smith is just going to lie on his back and do absolutely nothing, it does open the door for the potential to, for Span to grind out a win here in the same way that Alexander Rakic did. And this, for me, is the biggest risk to betting Smith. It's that self-destructive mentality and it's just that willingness to spend so much time on his back. There's also one huge weakness to Smith's ground game, which I really, really dislike. And that is that he hesitates in bad positions. Now, if you are a member on my website, I've got a different breakdown video uh, for this fight that I would strongly recommend you go and watch. All you need to do is go to betting tips, go into pre-fight betting tips. And if we jump into uh, this article here and scroll down, I highly, highly recommend you watch this 20-minute breakdown video on Anthony Smith versus Ryan Spann. I've just got a very short clip in that video which i obviously can't post on youtube because of copyright and all that kind of stuff but it's a very short 20 to 30 second clip which illustrates this point that i'm trying to make it's very clear the point i'm trying to make if you can watch footage of me explaining it but i might not do the best job of explaining it with words anyway smith does hesitate in bad positions a lot and this is a huge red flag for me what i mean by that is when smith is in a position to work his way back up to his feet or improve his position on the ground he hesitates so what i mean by that is say he is able to create enough space for himself off his back to get to his knees he will then hesitate in that position and allow his opponent to react to what he is doing so that's just a huge red flag for me because if ever you're in a position to improve your position on the ground or explode back up to your feet, keyword being explode, you've got to fully commit to it. As soon as you go halfway and hesitate, you give your oppo opponent an opportunity to react to what you're doing, flatten you back out, you know, secure control of your body or legs and put you in an even worse position smith is one of these guys that hesitates a lot and i don't know why he hesitates in the form of either you know doing the correct thing to start to work out of a bad position and then stopping before he completes that move or he 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 will he or he will it is so frustrating to watch him or he's just one of these guys that will you know, go to do the correct thing and then stop himself wherever he is. It's almost like a mental block, which is why I do think this guy is on a bit of a decline. And if you're thinking about him this fight this weekend, just know that win or lose, Anthony Smith is very inconsistent at this stage in his career. So now you have to ask yourself, do I want to bet a reasonably big favorite who is pretty inconsistent? It is tough. So from a betting point of view, this is a tricky fight because... From my perspective, I'd say Anthony Smith is probably better than Ryan Spann in every single aspect of MMA. The problem we've got here is that Smith can't really be trusted. And with his odds carrying an implied probability of around 60%, I don't see a lot of value in the odds here. I'm definitely picking Anthony Smith to win. I think he's a better fighter. You know, I think he's, he's, he's pretty much better than Spann everywhere. But there are such big risk factors with Smith that it's very difficult for me to trust him with my money at big favor odds. So I hope you found that breakdown useful. And let me know how you feel about this fight in the comments below. Remember, if you hit the like button on this video, as soon as this video gets 100 likes, I'll be dropping another breakdown for the fight between Ion Kutalaba and Devin Clark. But for now, thank you so much for watching. I hope you like this new format and this new way of doing things. Take care, guys, and I'll be back really soon with another breakdown video. Take care. Have a great day. Bye.